Thanks for dropping by the channel today. We've got a great episode for you. We're going to be talking about your ultimate travel kit. And I'm going to go through some things that help you make that decision for you because, you know, as photographers, it drives us crazy just before we go out on a trip. What do you bring? So we're going to try and help you out with that right now. So number one is, what kind of photography do you do when you're traveling? You do a mishmash of everything, so you kind of have to have a little of everything, or do you specifically do street photography, landscapes, portraits, architecture? What is it that you do? That's number one. And that really uh, kind of decides what, what you're gonna bring for gear. Now, if you're going on a photography adventure, that's a little bit different because you're going specifically for photography and you wanna make sure that you bring everything you're gonna need, everything from an ultra wide to a really long lens so that you don't miss anything. But that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about travel kits. Number two is what kind of gear do you use? Do you use zooms all the time or do you use primes all the time? This will definitely have a bearing on what you carry with you. For me, I kind of go both ways. And, uh, but when I'm shooting just primes, I tend to bring my Leica with me and three lenses. The 35, or actually, you know, sometimes I might even throw in a 21. This is a 28 here, but I'll throw in a 21 for an ultra wide, a 35, 50, and a 90, and that's it. And uh, all those lenses fit in one bag. And uh, I might even bring the, uh, my M3, which is over there, my M3, as a uh, film backup type of camera. Uh, but, you know, I don't do that much, of travel, that much traveling with this stuff because it's so valuable. I love it so much. I don't want to lose it. So I try not to use it when I go traveling. Although I'm going to show you some examples that I have used. I <laughs> took it to Oregon with me once and it scared the pants off me. I had that my bag with me all the time like this holding it, so I don't do that anymore. Um, I travel, when I go out to Oregon, I just bring my, my Fuji gear with me. Now, the other thing you wanna keep in mind, if you're gonna be using zooms, you wanna make sure that you're covered with just maybe two zooms. You don't wanna go crazy with an ultra wide, a medium zoom, and then a long zoom. Now, I'll just, I'll, when I go out to Oregon, I'll just bring the uh, 24, uh, excuse me, the 16 to 80 and the 70 to 300. And that's it, I won't bring anything else. And I'll bring two cameras, the X-T30 and the X-T3, which I'm filming on right now. Now, let's, here's my X-T30 right here. You can see how small this is. When I travel, I love to use this camera right here. Now these next shots coming up, we're done with the X-T30 and the 16 to 80. And quite honestly, I switch back and forth between the X-T3 and the X-T30, depending on what I'm shooting for the day. This was also done with the X-T30 and the 70-300. Now these shots up here in Maine were all done with the X-T3 and the 16-80, all the way out at 16. And also here at 120, or I should say at 80 with the 16-80 and the X-T3 up in Maine at uh, Nubble Lighthouse. And then this shot of this guy working on his boat was with the X-T30 and the 16 to 80 again. So as you can see, very versatile in this type of rig. So number, th number three, if you're budget conscious and you're working with what you got, that could be something like this M50 right here and just this one kit zoom lens on here. If you're gonna be doing that, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that. You can get some great stuff with this. You can actually t shoot some great video with it as well. And what I suggest you do is look for scenes or look for compositions that really make this uh, zoom shine. It's an 18 to 55. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Now, the other camera that I want to talk about here that if you're on a budget, this camera right here, the Canon G15, it's old now. Um, but you can find these used, really good price. And I gotta tell you, I love this thing. Now this is a protective uh, filter holder, I should say, but it actually protects the lens when it comes in and out. But it is one of the most compact cameras. This actually is a 28 to 140, 1.8. And I call it my little view camera in my pocket because the sensor is so small, the depth of field is enormous. Uh, unless you get, you're at 1.8 and you're real close. 
it's a great little camera. If you can find one of these or a G16 um, or a G11, they're great, great cameras. I really enjoy this and I'm gonna show you some pictures with that right now. One of the other cool things about this little G15 is, is that you can shut the sound off so you don't hear the shutter go off. And it makes for a great street camera in that situation because you can take pictures and nobody knows you're taking photographs. And then of course you're gonna get your usual sunset pictures that you would wanna take with uh, your spouse when you're on vacation and you're just traveling around. And there's a couple of great examples here that were done in Bermuda. Uh, as were the two photographs before this. And then the last shot uh, really is one of the jewels of this little camera is you can get really, really close. And it makes for some really great photographs as you can see right here. And number four is, do you need a backup? Well, you know, where is it? This can be your backup right here, <laughs> your phone. And for a lot of people, that works. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people just travel with one of these now. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. These, these phones are so good now that it's not that bad an idea at all because it's with you all the time. Um, this is my backup right here. I use this X-T30 and it, 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 it turns into my main camera half the time because it's so small and light. My X-T3 is just a little bit heavier and I'll, try, I'll usually, usually just put that away and I'll use this camera right here. Now, um, for backups, what can you use? Well, you can use the old G15 here. This is a great little camera or an M50. You know, use a point and shoot as your backup. That way you save on the weight and you're really, you're not having that much of a problem with weight. Because when you're traveling, weight is a huge deal. So if you can get, use two zooms or even one zoom and get away with it, I'll tell you, I, you know, my wife and I went to our 35th wedding anniversary down in Bermuda in 2013, and I used this camera for everything. I got a great little book out of it, and I, I wish I could show you some of the images, but I can't find them. Uh, they're somewhere, <laughs> not sure where. They're on a backup hard drive someplace. But this little camera here was unbelievable. I'm still gonna show you some images that I took in Bermuda the next time we went and I think you'll like it now. So on our next trip to Bermuda, I brought along the Sony a6300 and the NEX7. And the lenses that I brought with me were the, uh, the 10 to 15, I think it was, and the 16 to 70. And, you know, I got some pretty great results. Sorry, Fuji people, but I was using Sony at one point. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not anymore, but I actually got some really good pictures. The 10 to 18 is just an amazing lens. It's actually really, really good, as you can see here and the previous image before this. Um, I really enjoyed using that little system, except for the menu. <laughs> the menu system is just awful. But I got some amazing images, and it was a nice, light setup, and I had no worries carrying it at all. Now, the other thing that I will use that I that I used is a uh, Sony 63 A6300 and a Sony Nex7. And I used that as my main camera and my backup camera. I used a shot with the the um, the Leica and the Nex7 and I used the Nex7 with my Leica lenses on it so I didn't have any problems with uh, compatibility at all. I uh, Boy, I had a great time using that setup. I got some really, really great stuff, and I'm gonna show that to you too. Uh, we went up to Maine and went to Acadia National Park, and I used that same setup, the M240 and the uh, NEX7 and the adapter on there, and I got some great stuff. And I only used one lens on that, on that camera, on the NEX7. Actually, let me, I'll go get it for you. So you can see this NEX7 is really small. And I've got the adapter on it here now. And the, the, the lens that I used on it was the, the uh, Leica. I used the Leica 90 on here. And boy, oh boy, turns it into 135. Great stuff. So as you can see, I tried to give you some nice options here. But when you're traveling, it's really all about weight and what you're going to be shooting. 
So keep those in mind. It's really important because if you're walking around with your spouse or a friend or whatever it is, you don't want to be lagging behind because you're dragging too much stuff. Don't be bringing the giant 70 to 200 f2.8 Canon lens, which is, you know, ginormous. Bring small stuff and stuff you know you can get great results with it because you've been using it before. Now, I, I'm, I've gone completely to the small stuff and I gotta tell you, I love it. So some of you folks are saying, well, what does he bring for zoom lenses? Well, I bring my 16 to 80 and my 70 to 300 because these are my main lenses right here. Now I'll use my 10 to 24 because I have to shoot video. So I'm just carrying three lenses if I can get away with it. Now, if I don't have to shoot video at all, it's just those two lenses, that's it. And I will use primes and I do that with my XT30 and the uh, the 30, I have the 23 and the 50. I'll just bring those. And you know, if I want maybe the 90, I don't know. You know, it really kind of depends on what you're gonna shoot. But that's it for my lenses. Now, honestly, you don't need to carry a lot. You can get away with just this right here. And I've done it on many occasions. Just shoot with the 16 to 80 because this is a 24 to 120, and believe me, that's plenty. I mean, if I was shooting my, with my G15, that's a 28 to 143. So basically the same thing as a 16 to 80. This 16 to 80 would be perfect for just about everything. Now, if you don't have these newer lenses here, if you just have the 18 to 55 and the 55 to 200, you're golden. Perfect, perfect setup for your travel kit. There's nothing wrong with that. That's it for this week. I hope you like this little uh, suggestion box on how to pack for the ultimate travel kit when you go traveling. Because this summer you're going to be doing some traveling and my suggestion to you is travel light. That's it right there. Travel light and no more than two zoom lenses or no more than three primes and you'll be set to go. So remember, it's not what you shoot, it's how you shoot it. And that's it for this week and we'll catch you next time. Thank you.